Hey guys, what's up? Cyberpunk is a really cool sci-fi genre. This is a subgenre of sci-fi, and I think it's actually the coolest and one of my favorite genres in science fiction, because science fiction can be very, very much futuristic, very, very space travel, uh, exploration, you know, like things like you know, far into the future and something like that, but cyberpunk is cool. I think the cyberpunk is a little bit more present day. I feel like right now we are living in a cyberpunk society, you know, with, with computers, basically computers. And, um, and the thing is that cyberpunk is a little bit more of a newer genre. It's not necessarily your classic sci-fi genre. Because if you look at classic sci-fi genres, what are the biggest like sci-fi movies out there? We're talking Star Wars and Star Trek. Star Trek is space exploration, Star Wars is way in the future, we're talking faster than light travel, alien communities with people, um, a lot of fantasy elements like the Force and things like that, and Jedis and things like that. It's a whole world, it's a whole world building, you know? But cyberpunk is very, very near future. It's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be far in the future. And what's cool about cyberpunk is that we're kind of in a cyberpunk. Like if you walk down a city street, you're going to see the neon signs. You're going to see the rain, you know, coming down and the, the whole, how everything is dark, but there's like technology everywhere. There's, there's lights and there's like moving pictures and there's a lot of commercials and it's very, very heavily over heavily saturated with technology and, um, capitalism, you know, it's, it's very, very commercial. Wherever where you look, there's commercials and there's some company making money or doing something. And there's a lot of sci-fi. There's a lot of um, wearable tech and, um, you know, like, like, like bionic tech and like implant tech. Like, you know, if you look at some sci cyberpunk uh, movies, you'll see that like they've got a lot of like, like the phone, like their phone is implanted in their hand or something like that. It's very, very like heavy. It's, it's technology to the point where technology is not only like futuristic and cool, um, like Ready Player One, where, you know, the guy wears a basically, um, a haptic suit where it's everything like is a, um, very, very much like, um, sort of like realistic intel, you know, like th those, those things that you put on, and you're you're in the game, and you know you're kind of like, you know, like like a very very, um, like you're half like in reality and half into a computer, you know, like game computers and all kinds of other interactions with people. There's interactions with computers. There's interactions with robots. If you look back in the day and how like sci-fi started, um, you're gonna see like you know Star Wars and Star Trek because because this was the time of space travel on earth that that's what it was it was space travel right we were starting to go out there we went to the moon we went into space and we it looked like you know in another 500 years we're going to be warp driving faster than light all over the galaxy with other aliens that actually are already out there who are in a similar um technological um development state as we are you know that's the thing about like sci-fi is that like well the, the aliens that are out there they're not like superly like more technological than we are which probably they are because we're not that technological if you look at our technology basically metal was not like our technology is maybe five thousand years old at most you know and our space travel is less than a hundred years old <laughs> You know, if you got, if you go out there and there's like aliens who have been traveling the, the galaxy and other galaxies for thousands of years, millions of years, the technology of these aliens and the, the, the technology of that kind of society would be like so far in the future. I think we would understand it because we have a good understanding of technology, but it, it would so far in the future that we don't even like like we can't even conceive of the the gadgets and the technology and 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 the inventions that and the way these these tech you know these uh, aliens live, you know it's just 
we, we wouldn't, like we, we would see it, we'd recognize it as technology and we'd know it's technology, but it would be to a point where it would be just be like, you know, levels and levels and levels ahead to the point where these, these, they live in a society that we haven't even conceived of, you know? So the coolest cyberpunk movies, and I think the coolest one that I've seen recently, and they're not that much. There's not a lot of cyberpunk movies. I mean, we, we like cyberpunk movies and cyberpunk movies are cool. And there's more of them coming out, right? But they're a recent, they're, they're, they're a recent thing. You know, cyberpunk started with Neuromancer, the book by William Gibson, you know, which personally I read, I, I didn't read the whole thing. I read like into it and I couldn't understand any of it because it was so much different. He, he made it a different world and he really didn't translate that world into our world for us to understand it. It was so different that it was like, it's really, really hard to understand what was going on because the language was different and the way people talked was different. Everything about that book was just so different and very, very dark. There was nothing happy about that book. It was a very, very dark, bleak society, a very, very dark, bleak future. And um, however, he got like basically notarized for creating cyberpunk or, or making it something where it's a story, like, you know, basically doing that. So it's basically cyberpunk. And I think the next book that came out that I feel like was cyberpunk is Ready Player One. And this is also not too far in the future, pretty much near in the future, but still, you know, distant enough for the technology to be really advanced and really different and the story to be just on, on a society that's different and, and basically more, I would say, commercial, and definitely more dystopian than we are today, you know? But movies, um, the one that I really wanna talk about is a series that they had on Netflix called Altered Carbon. Altered Carbon is awesome. Now the thing about Altered Carbon is this, there's two seasons of it, and then there's some kind of an animated show, Altered Carbon. I didn't see the animated thing because I saw season one, and I think season one of Altered Carbon is great. Like, if you get a chance to see it, it's on Netflix, it's still there, both seasons. You know, I don't... <laughs> season two was, you know, season one was inspired and very, very interesting, very, very good, very you know, smart and intelligent, and they did it really, really well. Very, very well done, really good. You can enjoy it, it's well done. It's a couple of few hundred years in the future, not that far off, but people are basically immortal. I mean, they can go from one body to another body. They just grow bodies, you know, and people can kind of live in those bodies, right? Uh, people live in this thing called a stack, which is a technology for putting someone's consciousness into a piece of technology, right? And so once you have their consciousness in this technology called a stack, they can put these stacks into sleeves and sleeves are just bodies, you know, bodies that they grow and bodies look all different. So you could at one point be, you know, a certain race of man and then your next body could be a certain different race of woman, you know. Or something, you, know, you could be a man, you could be a woman, you could be whatever, you know, whatever body you're in. You could be in any, anyone's body. So it's, it's really, really cool how they did that. There was a lot of like, um, um, uh, virtual intelligence, you know, virtual reality is what I was talking about with the haptic suits. Virtual reality were like, you're in sort of like a computeristic sort of like environment. But at the same time, you're in a real environment also. It's virtual reality to the next level where people incorporate virtual reality with reality. You know, everything is like computer augmented and things like that. So um, what's cool about um, Altered Carbon, it's a great story. It's a great, it, it's an adventure. It's really, really cool. It's, it's in a dystopian society. And it was interesting because like, it feels like when you're dealing with um, capitalism and commercialism and high technology, you know, when everything is like basically um, sort of like whoever's got the most money has the most real estate, you know, whoever 
has the most money, has the highest technology, whoever has their commercials out there is the biggest company. When it's that kind of like, um, sort of like Darwin capitalism, you're bound to get some dystopia, you know? You're bound to get some negative effects of the uh, cyberpunk system, of the cyberpunk reality. The negative effects are when you have a lot of technology and you have a lot of machines and everything like that, you might have bad weather. You might have rain all the time, right? Because there's a lot of pollution. You might have it be cloudy or all the time, you know, whatever it is. You know, and um, that's what's cool about it. It's, what's cool about it is that you could see where a street has like fewer trees and more neon lights and more flashing commercials coming at you all everywhere. There are commercials pretty much everywhere. You cannot, you, you, you know, you turn on your phone, there's a commercial. You go anywhere, you watch anything, you watch YouTube, there's a commercial. You know, there's, there's, there's a commercial unless you pay not to have commercials. Like Netflix, you do no commercials because you pay for it. If you don't pay, anywhere you go where you don't pay, there's commercials. You walk down the street, commercials, commercials on cars, commercials on, on everywhere, you know. And this is very, very cyberpunk. You know, we're very high tech, moving picture commercials everywhere you go. And it's just, they, they put commercials in every space they could possibly put. Instead of putting art there, you know, instead of putting art, they're putting commercials. Now, if you look at something like uh, what they had, re you know, well, not too long in the past, and they still have it now, is graffiti. Graffiti is basically vandalism, right? And it's like, you know, the, the, they go and they spray paint on walls and they put their names up and whatever it is. At the same time, it's art, right? So that's illegal, and that's something that's not allowed. Even though it's art, it basically is very, very um, individualistic art, where people say, the world is my canvas, I can paint on stuff because of art. You know, you know, I can paint on any wall because of art, you know? And that's illegal, and that's not allowed. But you got like, you know, but you get like a company that puts their ad on, on a blank space and it's a commercial trying to get you to buy their product and that's not illegal, you know, that, that, that's, that's not art. It's a commercial and, but that's okay to have commercials everywhere, but it wasn't okay to have like um, graffiti everywhere. Even though graffiti is more of an art form and commercials are just like people trying to like push products on other people basically, right? They're just trying to push products. So Altered Carbon, if you haven't seen it, it's great. But the thing about Altered Carbon is only like season one was good. Season two was not good. They, they didn't know, they ran out of ideas after season one. And they were trying to do the same things they did in season one that kind of worked for season one, even though there was nothing inspired about it. It worked because it was inspiring. It worked because it had something to say. It worked because it was good and well done. Where like season two was more, was more like, well, we don't know what we're doing, so let's just do whatever worked on season one and we'll do more of that. So instead of expanding and making something new and making something more, they just, they just kind of like, you know, basically just made more of the things that they thought worked, <laughs> which I didn't think actually worked, not the way they thought it worked. And they could, they didn't even do it the way they tried to do what worked, but they didn't even do it in a, in a way that worked. It didn't even work the way, the way they tried to do it. And so Alter Carbon, awesome. I didn't see the, 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 the animated series. I haven't seen it. I just wasn't interested in the animated series. After watching a few episodes of season two, I didn't think it was that great anymore. <clears throat> but the next one, the other one that I think is the most popular cyberpunk movie, I think is... Um, Blade Runner, right? And Blade Runner is another one. It's not far in the future, but what they predicted at this point, and then this is interesting because like they they realized around the 80s, <laughs> right? That we're not going into space, but computers are going to be everywhere. You know, computers, it's just this society is just very, very integrated with computers. Computers are just pretty much everywhere. Everyone has a computer in their pocket. Every time you call someone, it's through a computer. Like every, everything is through computers, right? You you put a video up, it's through a computer. You watch some movie, it's from a computer on a computer. Everything's computerized, and so that's where cyberpunk started. You know, cyberpunk was like 
okay, we see this, there's going to be this over heavy saturation of technology. And that's, that's just technology coming out for no reason, just to be more technology and, and more technology and doing things that just weren't done before. And they're not going to be for any point just to sell your technology. That's the only point for it. Just people, you, you sell it and people use it. And that's the only reason it's there. You know, it's not like we went to the moon. Now we're going to go, you know, in 500 years, we're going to be traveling with aliens. You know, now it's like saying, well, you know, we don't even, we don't know if there's any aliens even in our area, even within, you know, like thousands of light years in our area. You know, our area might have no aliens because there's just so much room in this galaxy or like the universe that you don't, it doesn't have to be crowded. You know, it's like you could have an alien like in another part where it just to get there would be like, whoa, it's like, it would be, you know, light years away. It would just, it would take hundreds of years to, to develop the technology to even travel that far. It could, could be faster, could be slower, who knows, right? But Blade Runner was cool. And I think Blade Runner was one of the coolest um, um, cyberpunk. And what I'm talking about is the aesthetic. You know, not necessarily the part about Blade Runner, about about the um, uh, the replicants, you know, the, the, the fake people, the robotic people that look real. You think they're real, but and they think they're real, but they're really robots and they have an expiration date and they only live for several years and then they just go out of commission. You know, what was cool about it is it's cyberpunk is more of like the aesthetic, you know, the kind of world it's in more than the story about it. It wasn't a cyberpunk story, but it was a cyberpunk world with floating taxis and all kinds of like flying cars, uh, you know, gigantic commercial space where people were just like being, you know, and people just like walking around. It was raining all the time, bad weather. And um, there was a lot of like different languages everywhere. You know, that that's kind of cool. And people spoke different languages, you know, which, which is really cool. It shows a future where languages are just going to merge. And, and I, I see this happening with, you know, basically like YouTube or something like that, where, or, and even like the world, I, I see that happening in the world where people are traveling from place to place so much that they're picking up each other's language a lot more. They're not like, you know, being born somewhere and living somewhere and spending their lives somewhere. At some point, a lot of us are moving from place to place, going from place to place and just, and talking and other people are talking different languages around us. And, you know, basically, we're just going to start picking up other people's languages. You know, when you're a kid, you pick up languages very, very easily. And if you're just like being surrounded by one language, well, that's the language you speak when you grow up. But if you're surrounded by various languages, you're going to pick all of them up or, or some parts of them up to the point where you'll know some foreign languages here and there and, you know, in the other place, right? So, um so eventually, like, all these languages are just going to be, like, coming up all over the place. So whenever you go anywhere, a lot of times things are in multiple languages. When you buy food at the grocery store, <laughs> it's in multiple languages. And when you go somewhere, anywhere, travel anywhere, there's going to be different languages that are that are there. And they're trying to speak your language and you're just trying, trying to speak their language. And I, I feel like that that's also what was in uh, Blade Runner. It was that kind of thing where... Uh, there was just languages everywhere. There was different, you know, there was Chinese and then there was like English and there was like a lot of other different languages and stuff like that happening. So it kind of feels that way. Like when you go into a modern city, it feels that way, especially when it rains or it's a night nighttime, you see the, the neon and you see the, you know, the moving pictures and with more and more technology, you just see wearable technology and people using technology and technology all around you where like the commercials are, you know, video commercials. They're not like posters and pictures anymore. They're video commercials and they're everywhere. They're there. You walk into a restaurant, there could be commercials there. You walk into a bar, there's, there's commercials, you know, everywhere you go because commercials make money. If you have space, you could put a commercial there and you will be paid just because you're, you're renting out your space to a commercial. Right. And so th therefore there's, there's a lot of commercials there, you know? And so what I feel about with cyberpunk is 
there's got to be more. And the thing about cyberpunk is it's not popular enough, right? There, there's just too much. Sci-fi is just too much dis, either just dystopian or future kind of silliness where like things are just really, really bad and weird and awkward in the future. Like the future is just weird. Like the more, the, the recent sci-fi, the future is not that great. Um, and instead of like the older sci-fi where the future was very, very technological, very expanded, very advanced, it, it, it was a question of where are we going? You know, we're gonna expand. We're gonna, you know, travel the the galaxy and stuff like that. And now we're like, well, we don't know how to travel the galaxy. We haven't even tried. We haven't done anything with the galaxy. And the more we look out there, the less we see. Like, you know, we we thought, hey, we're just gonna look out there. There's gonna be aliens and stuff like that. And we're looking out there. They thought there were aliens on the moon at some point, and then on Mars. And we're looking out there. And we're like monitoring the, the heavens and we're looking out there and into space and we, we've got nothing. <laughs> we can't find anyone. And it's probably because light is just traveling so slowly compared to like how big everything is. And so just, just something that's like a hundred light years away, you know, we can't, we don't even see it. We can't see what's happening a hundred light years away. We could just see what's happening a hundred light years in the past, right? Because whatever is there, we're not going to see that for a hundred years, whatever's happening right now. So it's interesting how everything, you know, they're, they're making movies about um, cyberpunk. They're putting that aesthetic. And I think that's really, really cool when you have like wearable technology and like bionic technology, that's happening. You know, they're trying to like see cyberpunk is like, which with sci-fi generally, we're trying to see, well, what's in the future? What's in the near future? What's in the far future? We're trying to figure it out. And they're like computers and gadgets and technology and capitalism and, you know, things out there that the only point of their existence is that they're making money, not that they're doing something for someone at all, you know, and, and, and technology that's only there because it makes money for someone who's putting it out there and it's making them money, so they're putting more of it out there. And that's the thing about like like cyberpunk. And there's just not a lot of like series. There's not a lot of like movies in cyberpunk. But it's nice when you have them. And I think it's the new it's the new sci-fi. Because the people are, are kind of tired of like sci-fi that's like, okay, they're on a spaceship, and guess what? There's like a crazy, you know, rogue robot trying to run the ship, or they're they're somewhere in a part of the galaxy, they don't know where they are, you know. Or the ship is like traveling by itself somewhere and they don't know what's going on. They don't remember who they are. They can't pilot the ship, you know, all kinds of stuff. Even something like um, 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 uh, Serenity, you know, the movie Serenity uh, was also called Firefly when it was a series. That's also very, very sci-fi. It's not very, very like, it's a little bit. It's there, There's some cyberpunk in there because I feel like the new the new sci-fi is cyberpunk it's very very cyberpunk inspired because we're looking at you know where how how technology goes wrong and how there's too much of it and how it's just over heavy to the uh, amount of technology to the point where it doesn't really do anything for anyone you know something like that so let me know what you guys are thinking thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video let me know what you're thinking in the comments um, let me know what your favorite cyberpunk movie is. A like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Take care. Later.